Hi, I'm Gaina Lynn. Welcome to Thoughts on the Book of Mormon. Today we are going to go a little bit slower. Usually I feel like I have so much I want to share and I'm just kind of squeezing it all in there as fast as I can to stay within my time limit. And today, as I was reflecting, I was feeling like there was just a few things and all of a sudden I thought that's exactly what God wants me to do is just to share a simple testimony. So today we're talking about 2 Nephi 10 and 11. And then the next video I'm going to upload um, won't be for a few more chapters. We're going to do 12 through 17 in the next video. So um, if you are trying to follow along on the reading schedule that we started with last year, this video series will go with that and I will uh, try to upload that so you can see what I'm going with here. So Second Nephi 10, we are um, dealing with still some Isaiah overlap, but it's important to know here that some of the language that is used, um, as in all reading of scriptures, we're having to discern in context with where the author is placing it but also within the history of when it was written. And Isaiah, as we've talked about in a number of videos, he's a past, present, and future writer. And so as um, Isaiah is referenced here, um, and we know more now because we're living through some of what was prophesied, talks about a land of liberty and that is America. Now, whether or not you're watching this video and you live in the United States or not, um, likely if you're watching this video on IGTV or on my YouTube channel, you're reading the Book of Mormon. And if you are reading the Book of Mormon, you um, know somewhat about maybe the Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints. The headquarters is in Utah. And the restoration with Joseph Smith and the translation of the Book of Mormon happened on the America continent, the American continent. So... I think it's important to know that as it references the king of the Gentiles helping with the restoring of the Jews and that um, there's been no way in which America has been overtaken. Pearl Harbor was bombed and America has been in wars, but no one has taken over this land. And I think that's an important thing to know that as... Um, a country as a whole that we have been preserved, I believe, to be a foundational place for the restoration to take place. And then as this chapter goes on, it talks about how through our choice and through grace, we are saved. Um, I love Brad Wilcox's teachings on grace. If you haven't watched his devotional on grace, find it. It's easy to find. YouTube Grace, um, Brad Wilcox, BYU devotional will be the first thing that comes up. I think it's a pivotal landmark discussion on grace. Um, and I've told him this many times. We've had the opportunity to get to know each other the last few years. And he, he changed the conversation about grace because of how he taught it. He, he taught us about how we really do have to use our agency in showing up to receive this gift but we can all receive this gift. And so I think um, that's such an important principle to consider as you read this chapter in chapter 10, 2 Nephi, that it's, our, it's through grace only that we are saved. Even if you made every whatever you would define as correct right choice, you would need grace. Chapter 11, I love that this talks about somewhat the law of witnesses and how everything is a type that points to Christ. And um, without Christ, we would not be able to survive anything. Isaiah's teachings point to Christ. Even the story of Moses and leading the children is a type of Christ. Uh, as you enter into the temple, everything in the temples point to Christ. And recently I was having a conversation with someone um, that doesn't study the Book of Mormon. And I was thinking about how this friend has such a wonderful 
um, understanding of the Bible and how together in our conversation, I had some understandings about Christ and this friend had understandings about Christ and they were these witnesses coming together. And I, I love that we have an opportunities, opportunity as students of the Book of Mormon to witness um, this unfolding story, but don't get so caught up in the story that you miss the why. It is another testament of Christ. President Nelson has, has in the past issued a challenge to read the Book of Mormon and mark any verses that point to Christ. And I have a friend who has already done that and started over again because she was missing that focus in her reading. She had previously been underlining anything that pointed to faith. And when I study my scriptures, sometimes I will choose a word for a year, like peace. One year I chose peace. So anything I read in the scriptures on peace, I circled it a certain color and, and kind of dug deep there. Uh, one year it was love. One year it was faith. And I think what, what I hope to gather together in these stories is that we see Christ and that we're turning to Christ, that we're speaking of Christ and testifying of Christ so that our children will know what source to turn to. So often we can go to our church meetings and sit in our lessons, sit in our come follow me conversations, in our study, in the temple, all of these things that are to point us back to Christ. And we don't see him there. We don't look for him there. We don't try to focus on the Christ that we are being directed to through these verses, through these stories. So my hope and the main message for this, this video today for chapters 10 and 11 in 2 Nephi is to testify of Christ, to invite you as we finish the Book of Mormon this year, that you will find Christ and that everything that you read, you will ask yourself, how is this helping me know him better, become like him in some way or pointing me to him in some way? And I think those three questions are super helpful. Sometimes it's going to be obvious. Sometimes it's not. But the Holy Ghost, the Holy Spirit that is there with us as we study can whisper, guide, put questions in your heart and mind so that you can ask those questions. So then the revelation comes. What I've learned more than anything um, is that when I ask when I'm prompted to ask a question is when the revelation comes. Revelation is not just a fire hose turned on me. It is a shower head that if I turn the handle, it will come. So we have to ask the questions. So oftentimes when I read my scriptures, the better sessions are the ones where I start with a question. Oftentimes I will read my scriptures and then I will journal questions that come to mind after. And that too has been a helpful tool for me. I hope something that I've shared today will help you. I hope you'll share these videos with friends and family that maybe are feeling stuck in their scripture study. Um, I know that many of us are focusing on Come Follow Me in our families and in our homes, and I think that's so wonderful. But I would have something missing in my life if I didn't spend time every week in the Book of Mormon as well, because it helps uh, me understand Christ even better. I, I love each of you and hearing from you, and thank you for joining me this week.